Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. PNL Patreon family birthday shout out to that queen on your screen. Her name is Carlene Forrest. Carlene is living in New York. Carlene, you are celebrating your 50th birthday today. Queen Carlene, thanks for the support. Let's hope that today you'll be having a wonderful birthday and may you live to see a whole heap more. Now, that man on your screen, his name is Conroy Lee Campbell. Conroy, he was ailing for some time and he passed away on February 28th. Conroy died leaving a host of family, friends and loved ones. There will be a wake yard for Conroy this Friday, March 31 at Ferris. Funeral service will be at the Doyle's Funeral Chapel on Saturday, April 1. The funeral service will be starting at 12 noon. And interment will be at the nearby Tate Cemetery. We'd like to say condolences to the family and friends of Conroy. May his soul find rest. Now, yesterday, I told you about a fatal traffic accident and I promised to update it. It took place Saturday afternoon, March 25, about some minutes after 4 o'clock. It took place along the Green Island Main Road right in the vicinity of the GV gas station in the parish of Anova. Now, we did some digging and here is what we found out. A guy, his name is Jeremiah Smith. He is 23 years old and we are told that he's a chopper. He is living at Marchtown in the Green Island Police area in the parish of Hanover. We are told that Jeremiah, he was driving his grey Toyota Voxy along the Green Island main road. He was heading towards Negril. Now, I'm not sure where Jeremiah was hurrying to, but we are told that he overtook a line of traffic. Jeremiah, with his carelessness, he collided into Mr. George Augustus Kellyer, who was riding his black 2017 Madpack CG150 motorcycle. He was coming in the opposite direction. Now, if you look on your screen, that is a photograph of the road where this accident took place. As a result of the impact, Mr. Kelly, he was thrown from the bike onto the asphalted main road and he reportedly died on the spot. Now, if you look on your screen, that is a photo of the Voxy that Jeremiah was driving. On your screen now is a photo of the bike that Mr. Kelly was riding. Mr. Kelly, he had no chance whatsoever of surviving this accident. Dangerous driver, Jeremiah Smith, he was taken into police custody and we are told that he will be charged for causing death by dangerous driving. Let's hope that witnesses come forward and give statements so that this guy, he can be given the full force of the law. Condolences to the family and friends of Mr. Kelly. May his soul find rest. Now, in this next incident, we are learning that a man, his name is Mr. Maliki Bailey. He would have celebrated his 91st birthday three weeks ago on March 5. Mr. Bailey, he was a pensioner and he lived at Salt Spring Road in the parish of St. James. Mr. Bailey, he was reported missing to the police on Monday, January 2. We are told that he had not been seen or heard from since New Year's Day. Well, late yesterday afternoon, Sunday, March 26, about 6 o'clock, the skeletal remains, believed to be that of Mr. Bailey, was found in bushes at Hatfield Boulevard in the parish of St. James. A green pants, a black and white slippers, a red hat and a diaper were found on the scene. We are told that Mr. Bailey, he normally wear adult diaper and the clothes that were found matched the same clothes that he was last seen wearing. Investigations are ongoing, but so far, the police are saying that 
no foul play is suspected. Sad indeed. Now, over at Central Flats in the Dias area in the parish of Anova, a man, his name is Mr. Carnell Somerville. He is 67 years old and he was said to be a mental health patient. He lived at Central Flat. We are told that Mr. Somerville, he was being cared for by his sister. She said to be in her late 50s. Now, both she and her brother, they were living in a four-bedroom concrete house. Mr. Somerville, he occupied one of the bedrooms in the house. We are told that yesterday morning, Sunday, March 26, about some minutes to 9 o'clock, Mr. Somerville's sister prepared and served him breakfast. She then left him in his room and went to church. About 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon, residents of the area, they saw fire and smoke coming from the back section of the house. When they made checks, they realized that it was coming from the section occupied by Mr. Somerville. The residents, they tried to open the grill, but it was securely locked. The residents, they worked together and they brought the fire under control. When the fire brigade responded, they did cooling down operation. Now, checks were made in the house and the lifeless body of Mr. Somerville was found lying on his back. His hands and face were partially burnt. He was DEAD. Investigations are continuing. Sad indeed. Now, we are going to be journeying to the parish of St. Catherine for a little bit. In the first incident coming out of the parish of St. Catherine, we are learning that a 34-year-old racehorse jockey, he is lucky to be alive. This is because of an incident that took place early yesterday morning. Sunday, March 26, about some minutes to 8 o'clock. It took place at the intersection of Caymanas Drive and the Gregory Park Main Road in Portmore. Now, we are learning that the racer's jockey. He works at Caymanas Park. He had just finished exercising at the track and he was now on his way home. He was driving his 2010 grey Nissan Skyline motor car when on reaching the intersection of the Gregory Park Main Road and Caymanas Drive. A motorcycle with Two hoodlums aboard rode up beside the car that the racer's jockey was driving. The pillion jumped off the motorcycle and pulled a gun from his waistband. He then opened gunfire at the racer's jockey. The jockey, he managed to reverse the car and the hoodlum, he ran and jumped back onto the motorcycle and he and his crony, they made good their escape. The jockey, he was not hurt but we are told that the right front fender and the right headlamp were damaged by bullets. The police were called and when they processed this crime scene, four 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. So, in that incident, the jockey was lucky. He was not hit, but this man, he was not so lucky. This incident, it took place yesterday afternoon. Sunday, March 26, about 3 o'clock. It took place at Terminal Beach at Old Harbor Bay. So, this is what we are learning. A 25-year-old fisherman known as Steve, he was riding his bicycle on the beach when he was approached by two hoodlums who had guns in their hands. The hoodlums opened gunfire at Steve, hitting him below his right eye. We are told that Steve, he jumped from his bicycle and escaped the two hoodlums. In trying to escape, we are told that Steve, he received injuries to his shoulders. Steve, he was assisted to the Old Arbor Bay police station where he was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was treated and admitted. The mayhem, now still in the parish of St. Catherine. This one took place before the early yesterday morning. Sunday, March 26, about some minutes after 4 o'clock. It took place at Wheatum Lane at Newlands in Portmore. We are learning that residents, they heard a barrage of gunshots being fired from about some minutes after 4 o'clock. At daybreak, they went and made checks in the area. We are told that when they made checks, they stumbled upon the lifeless body of a man. 
Now, this man, his name is Sean Sanderson. He is a 24-year-old fisherman and he was living at Adventist Close in Newlands in Portmore. Sean, he was seen lying on his back in a pool of blood. The police were called and when they inspected Sean, he was found with gunshot wounds to his face. He appeared to have died on the spot. We are told that when this crime scene was processed, three 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. Now, back in western Jamaica, in the come, they are carrying out investigations to see if the police acted lawfully in the killing of that man on your screen. His name is Ovado Samuels. He is also known as Vardo. He lived at Mount Pleasant in the parish of Hanover. Now, the police, they are reporting that early yesterday morning, Sunday, March 26, about 4 o'clock, they went to lock down a wakeyard that was being held at Mount Pleasant. They are saying that one of the patrons identified as Vardo. He became boisterous and he used a bottle to hit one of the police constables. The police are saying that the police constable, he received a serious wound to his head which bled profusely. As a result, he fell to the ground. They are saying that another of the police officers, he held on to Vado and a struggle ensued. They are further alleging that Vado, he pulled the policeman's gun from his holster and he was shot by another policeman. He died as a result. Now, what I just told you is what is being alleged by the police. Yes, there is another side and I am hoping to speak to a family member of Vado. Stand by. That conversation will be coming up. Indicom are asking persons who witnessed this incident to give them a call. The mayhem. In this next incident, it took place last night. Sunday, March 26, about some minutes to 8 o'clock. It took place at Mafuta in the Cambridge Police area in the parish of St. James. What we are learning is that a man, his name is Rowan Barrett, but he's popularly known as Ratty. Ratty is 32 years old and he was living at Mafuta. We are told that Ratty, he was in a shop playing on a poker machine box when he was approached by a hoodlum who pulled a gun and opened gunfire at him, hitting him in his head and his upper body. The hoodlum, he then made good his escape. Ratty, he apparently died on the spot. The police were called and when they processed this crime scene, we are told that eight 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell, then click all, so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be the first to be notified. And if you notice, if you notice, we are extending our coverage. We now left Western Jamaica, you know, <laughs> but we are covering Jamaica like the sun. Trust me, there is a whole lot more to come. You are going to want to stick around and tell a friend to tell a friend. And for those of you. Who have been saying, Papai, how comes you not carrying no news from Yaso or Deso? <laughs> Stand by. Stand by. Now, in the final story for today, this incident, it has its genesis from 2018. It started from a conflict with two high school dance groups. Students on these dance groups were students at the St. Mary High and St. Mary Technical High Schools in the parish of St. Mary. The young men involved, they graduated, but the conflict continued. As a result of this conflict, on Wednesday, July 22, 2020, that man on your screen, his name is Henry Winter, but he's popularly known as Glamadan, or he was popularly known as Glamadan. He was killed during an altercation with a guy named 
Anthony Graham, also known as Neo. Neo is from Highgate in the parish of St. Mary and he was arrested and charged for murder. Neo, he was subsequently freed in the St. Mary Circuit Court in 2021 by Chief Justice Brian Sykes. Friends of Glamadan, they decided that it na go so. People are go dead. We are told that since then, about six men have either been killed or seriously wounded as a result of the killing of Glamadan. It is also said that that man on your screen, his name is Giovanni Higgins, but he's popularly known as Marcus. He is 22 years old and he was a warder. Marcus, he lived at Highgate in the parish of St. Mary. It is said that he and Neo was acquitted for the murder of Glamadan. They are very good friends. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, persons associated with Glamadan, they are saying that Marcus, he was also involved in the killing of Glamadan. Well, yesterday evening, Sunday, March 26, about 6.30, Marcus and other persons, they were at a play field at his former school, the St. Mary High School at Highgate in St. Mary. Also on that play field was that youngster on your screen. His name is Nathan Segre, but he's popularly known as Pazzi. Whilst they were on the football field, a white Toyota Axio motor car drove up, stopped and reversed onto the football field. Two hoodlums jumped out of the car with guns in hand. Marcus and Pazzi on seeing this, they ran off, but they were chased by the hoodlums. The hoodlums, they opened gunfire at Marcus and Pazzi, hitting them all over their bodies. The two hoodlums, they then jumped back into the car and made good their escape. It is suspected that both Marcus and Pazzi, they died on the spot. We are told that when this crime scene was processed, a number of 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick silver sin. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. Criminals, they're my